All right. I'm, Josh, I'm excited, why don't you I'm play ex- what you are going to play before dude, first? I, I'm excited to listen to the fan this week after that, honestly. I really Yeah, am. it's going to be awesome. I can't yeah. wait to hear Beningo. So, just a little next. bit of a backstory. There was a game earlier on in the week, then uh, Mets were losing in the ninth. No, they game. were winning in the ninth. No, 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 no but prior to, the <coughs> lose, prior to that, when this happened. Did Frazier just tie it up with a home run? He did. Oh, he took the lead. That was a two-run homer. Wow, I just saw the ball going in the seats. That's a clutch home run. Wow, that's a yeah. Frazier tied it, and they were losing very shortly thereafter. Let's see if he can get Segura out first. Segura hits a shot, home run. Yeah, wait, wait, ready? Unbelievable! (laughs) I'm okay with listening to this. Yeah, I'm alright with it too. So this guy comes in and gives up five runs. That sums it up. Fire all of them. Don't even bring them back to New York. You know what? Let the bus go the other way, please. I saw this. Tomorrow man. night, let the 69 Mets take the field. <laughs> they do a better job against the Braves. This is unbelievable. There's Frazier hits one of the one of the biggest home runs you could hit in, in your life. Kept the Mets alive. 2-1 Mets. They had an insurance run. 3-1 Mets. Go to the bottom of the ninth. They traded to get this kid, the great reliever. They bring Diaz in here. All he's got to do is get a rocking chair, a rocking chair save against the bottom of the lineup. Wow. I agree. Don't usually say Walks that. Walks the first batter, gives up a home run to the eight hitter. <laughs> and then gives up a three-run jack to Segura. He play for the on his 38th pitch or whatever the heck it was. <laughs> He's done. He's shot. Bullpen shot. Team shot. Managers shot. Yeah. The pitching strategist. Who the hell knows what he does in the first place? <laughs> hey, you know what? Just listen. Let the Mets take the bus. Instead of coming north on a turnpike, send it south. Let the 69 Mets suit up tomorrow night. This is a disgrace. I don't. I can't even believe it. <laughs> you can't lose this game. Yeah. They stink so bad Four. you can't even well, make it up. That's by the Phillies, who were lost seven in a row. Coming Thirty-seven into the series, and forty-five. Diaz goes down and gives up two homers and five runs. <laughs> After Frazier hits the clutch home run of the year to keep this team breathing. I completely agree. You gotta be kidding me! Get rid of all of them. They're a bunch of jokers. Alonzo, I apologize. <laughs> McNeil, I apologize. Thank you. Yeah. Degrom, maybe I apologize. <laughs> the rest of you, you stink. Back after this. All right. I tell you what. So man, it's not wrong. Coming from and I hate to say one it of my Francesa, one of my uh, idols, Mr. Mike Francesa. Okay. Um, he was yeah, okay. obviously watching the game live as it happened. Um, and this was just uh, the cherry on top to what had been. If you need to like, if I need to describe to someone what it's like being a fan of the New York Mets, this week encompassed it perfectly. Okay? Okay. So Saturday okay. or Sunday after the Mets lose, within an hour after the game, reports start coming out about some clubhouse, clubhouse altercation Gosh. between Mickey Calloway, uh, Tim Healy, and... And Jason Vargas. Uh, Jason Vargas had to be restrained by Noah Syndergaard and J- Carlos Gomez telling the guy, I'll knock you the fuck out, bro. Pa- I, I like Tim Healy a lot. He's one of the few Mets reporters that actually criticizes the owners. Not many of them do that because they're afraid of him. Yep. And all he said to Mickey, apparently, was, see you tomorrow, Mickey. After Mickey was challenged for not using um, uh, Edwin Diaz on a five-out save. After he said, "Will you a month ago, we'll use Edwin Diaz in four to five-out saves. Hasn't done it since. Okay. So he doesn't use him. They lose. The media asks him, why didn't you use Diaz? Why didn't you use Diaz? And then he he freaks out on the guy, tells him, um, don't be a wise-ass motherfucker. Uh, Get this motherfucker out of the clubhouse. Has security. Remove him. Wonderful. Next day rolls around on Monday. Uh, They send out Mickey Calloway to talk to the media. Says that he talked to Tim Healy in private. Apologized. um, But he wouldn't apologize to the media. Just said, you know, I wish I handled it differently. Decided to invoke Billy Martin, who once punched a reporter as a good defense or whatever. I actually had no problem with what Mickey Calloway said. I thought it was okay. I, I, I didn't need to know what he said to Tim Healy in public, and I don't think he had to publicly apologize either. Jason Vargas did not apologize at all. Um, Has said, uh, you don't know what happened, whatever. The Mets send Mickey Calloway out two hours later to then apologize again, something I've never seen before. Ownership, front office has him by the balls. An 
hour after that, it comes out that Brody Van Wagenen has been managing games from home, telling Mickey Calloway via a third party when to remove players from games, specifically removing Jacob deGrom from a game a month ago when he uh, had a, hip, a cramp in his hip. Okay? From home, sending the manager to tell him what to do. Also leads me to believe that Mickey wants to use Edwin Diaz in four to five out saves in the front office and ownership told him no because we owe this guy money and he's young and we don't want to get him hurt. Yep. Okay? So then we have this terrible series with the Phillies where we get swept, encompassed by Edwin Diaz continuing to be terrible and a complete disappointment. I think I said a month ago, he stinks. Is there something wrong? Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, I still believe that there's going to be something that comes out about his elbow because his slider has no depth. Gene Segura, who hit the walk-off home run, said specifically this guy was unhittable last year and it's just not there. Maybe it's a clubhouse. No shit, it's a fucking clubhouse. No mm-hmm. shit, it's a front office because the Wilpons picked the GM that I was in favor of that they could control because this guy knows he can never blow the shot again because he should have never gotten the job because he's an agent, not a GM. So he's doing exactly what the ownership tells him and that's what the Wilpons want. They want people in there that will they listen to yes what they man. say. They listen to what they say. Do you want to know? I, it gets even better, guys, Please, this me. week in the Mets, okay? So they had the 69 team honoring yesterday. 50 years since the 69 team. Really nice ceremony. Obviously, since 1969, a lot of the players on the team that were on the team died, right? Yep. They do the in-memoriam. They put two players up there that are not dead in the in-memoriam. Awesome. Okay? So the Mets can't even get who's alive and dead right. And I'm supposed to have confidence that these asshole Wilpon Mets owners are going to get it right. And Mickey Calloway, before that fucking game on uh, Friday night, comes up, he's on with Francesa, handles the interview really well. But he even straight up said, oh yeah, we're going to need a miracle to come out of this. That's what I want to hear from the manager that we need a miracle. You can't say you that. You can't say that. Yes, they were called the Miracle Mets. It was 1969. Okay? They didn't have a bullpen that is giving up runs every single night. That game that Diaz blew. The bullpen pitched well from guys I didn't expect. Dude, the Brooks like- Pounder. Uh, Chris Flexen didn't give up any runs. Edward Diaz comes out and gives up five runs. Who outside of Jeff McNeil and Pete Alonso should have any sort of faith in? I have no faith in anything that goes on. Pete Alonso's doing the home run derby. Should be really cool. I expect him to fucking tear a lap muscle in it. Yep. That's where my faith is at. And I have friends that are not Mets fans, but they want to see them do well for me. Like, why do you retweet things that are making fun of them? Like, like, I have to justify being a fan and having fun with it. Like, I have to laugh at this because it's so insane. Literally, since 2006, they've made the playoffs twice. 2007 collapse, 2008 collapse, 2009, Luis Castillo drops the ball. 2010, they signed Jason Bay, he sucks. 2011, uh, th- nothing happens. 2012, Johan Santana, no hitter, never pitches again the same way. It just goes on and on. 2015, they make the World Series, they lose. 2016, they get a wild card, they lose the wild card game. Since then, nothing. 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 You, you got Terry Collins left because of the owners. He would have kept managing. Yes, he's older, but he would have kept managing. But the Wilpons started getting their fingers on it because they thought the team was closer than they were. The 2015 team was magical. They had a lot of things going for it and a lot of things break right. And the teams that win the World Series generally have everything work right perfectly for them sometimes. Mm-hmm. A few years ago when the Red Sox won, I think in 2013, everything went right. The next year they were terrible instantly. The Mets had everything go right. And the young pitching that we thought would be here for five, six years hasn't worked out. Where's Noah Sinner? Guard. He's coming back today. Where has he been? Has he been good this year? No. Has he lived up to what we thought he was going to be? No. no not at he's all. been good when he's on there, but he hasn't been the ace. Jacob DeGrom has been good this year. He hasn't been Jacob DeGrom last year. That's an unrealistic expectation. If yep. he's Jacob DeGrom, I'm happy with him. Zach Wheeler, up and down. Steven Matz, up and down. Jason Vargas is the most consistent thing on this team. Yep. And now the whole team is mad at him. Even if Mickey says they're not, the front office is mad at him because of the way he handled it. Teammates are mad at him because they like the reporter it was. What on this team? Goes right outside of Jeff McNeil and Pete Alonso. Absolutely nothing. I would, I, I would go as far as to say I, I like that Vargas is pissed off. I yeah, like that I, Vargas is doing shit like I that. I don't like that he he's saying there's something else to this that you guys aren't saying. Then say it. That, Why aren't right. your teammates defending you? Yeah. No, Why is everyone that. corroborating the same exact story except you? You got mad. We get it. But if you're a veteran on this team that sucked last year and is doing good this year, you need to be more accountable. Jacob DeGrom was willing to go up there and take the heat for it because he's a leader, which I've not seen since David Wright. Yep. But who on this team is doing anything to justify being brought back next year outside of DeGrom? Alonzo and McNeil. No one. Mickey Calloway shouldn't be back. The pitching coach shouldn't be back. Chili Davis shouldn't be back. I don't want anyone on this team outside of those guys back next year. Whatever happened to Cespedes? Is he still oh, there? he broke his ankle on a fucking ranch oh. when he was rehabbing. I thought maybe he'd be back in August or September. No. He fell on a hole on his fucking ranch and broke his ankle in two places. By the way, they owe him money for two more fucking years. Yep. Oh, who signed his contract? The Mets GM Brody Van Wagenen. Yep. Okay. So what? Okay. So look at everyone graded their offseason season. As like an A, all right? Sign Wilson Ramos, uh, extended DeGrom, uh, Jed Lowry, all these moves. Uh, Edwin Diaz, Cano. What has Cano done this year besides bat 220? 
And the three hole of all and places. And the three hole. Mickey Callaway, why won't you drop him? Oh, because Brody Van Wagen is saying you can't, okay? So what faith should I have in anything about this Cock sucking bullshit New York Mets team. Um, what was the kid that what was the kid they just signed from high school? That pitcher that they had a great with? draft. Yes, that's they right. had a great draft. Yeah. Yes. And those guys will be no, here no, in four years. No, no, no. That's I'm agree. I'm just saying Allen, like, if, Allen. if you could look for a tiny Matt Allen, Matt Allen, could, Allen and Brett Beatty, they drafted. I'm saying yes. if you could look for a tiny silver lining. There, the everyone smallest. every expert is grading their draft as the best this past season. But they also got graded as having one of the best off seasons here. What is where has Jed Lowry been? Wilson Ramos was supposed to hit. He's hit okay. His defense is supposed to be good. His defense has been horrendous. Mm-hmm. Their defense is disgustingly bad. They can't turn a double play to save their life. They have infielders playing the outfield. Uh, Dom Smith, to his credit, has been an awesome hitter this year. I would be okay with keeping him, but he has no position. Trade him for something. But why do I have any faith in the people who would make the trade to make the right trade? Well, this is the only way this is going to go. The guys they traded for uh, Cano and Diaz, Jared Kalanick, who was the first round yep. pick last year, and Justin Dunn, who was a third round pick a few years ago. He's going to become Mickey Mantle, Kalanick, and the other one's going to become Sandy Koufax. It's the only way this ends with the Mets. It's the only way it happens. When you trade guys, they become legendary. Nolan Ryan was a pretty good pitcher. He became fucking Nolan Ryan once the Mets traded him. Okay? So why am I supposed to have any fucking belief that anyone on this team and anything will go right? Well, uh, you shouldn't, and I completely agree with you, especially because now, like, I'm just seeing it. I it's just, upsetting. I, the, 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 un, the incompetence is what blows dude, my mind. I don't understand. It's, it's so upsetting because it's... The things that are happening the t- now dude, are the, the same things not- that were happening ten years ago. But dude, it's not even a. The part that's more annoying is that the team isn't even that bad. Well, the they bullpen, scored, dude, the, they, the bullpen speaks the for itself. The bullpen's the problem. Outside, the bullpen's the main problem. Outside of Seth Lugo, and Seth Lugo can't even do it right. No, most he time. can't either. But like, if you like, they score runs. You just heard Francesca say it. Yeah, the run- Frazier's bat is Frazier's batting been great well, this year. Dude. Frazier's been great this Jeff, year. Jeff McNeil's batting over three hundred. Alonzo beat uh, Dallas Strawberry's rookie home run this record. This is this is what I do if I'm Brody Van Wagenen. I trade Frazier. I trade Wheeler, and I trade Noah Syndergaard. I, I would do that too. I would trade somewhat because Wheeler, you're gonna he, he's getting traded within the month, guarantee you. Syndergaard, you'll get more for because he's under team control. Yeah, <clears throat> that's how I feel about the no, fucking Mets. No, no, let me let me ask you two questions. One. How do you feel about McNeil at some point finding his way at second base because Robinson Cano is probably going to I hurt. would prefer him at second base. Okay, good. He's played a very decent outfield for a guy that hasn't played outfield since high school. They had a great Mickey Calloway. To his, I actually don't even fully blame Mickey Calloway because I think he's being hold, held by his balls by the front office yeah, I, entirely. I um, he said a, a quote about Jeff McNeil that Jeff McNeil is an old school baseball player. He could play any position and he's confident if we needed him to start, he'd pitch a shutout. And that's how I picture Jeff McNeil. Yeah. A, and... But I, he should be the second baseman. baseman. Or, uh, but if you trade Frazier, make him the third baseman. That's his natural well, position. But he, okay, here's here's my next thing because I heard someone mention this and I th- found it to be very interesting. Rosario to center? No, which w- would make I'm sense. not against he, either. He, he's quick as shit. Yeah. What? What's the possibility of maybe moving Alonzo to third? No, um, I don't like first. it. I don't, don't like it. Okay, because no, he's explain more, to me why. Okay, so Pete Alonzo, to the me. knock on him, it's always been said that he's going to hit, but the knock has been that he should probably he's be defensive. a DH. He's defensive, and he's turned out to be a very, very good defensive first baseman. He leads the league in spook, uh, spooks. Oh, shit. Uh, Easy. Uh, that's, a, that's a legit I didn't, accident. I, I didn't mean to. Uh, picks it for, <laughs> I see Josh's face is lit up right now like it's Christmas. Yeah, it. uh, yeah good job. Uh, he leads, let's see if he can get... Sorry, that wasn't what I'm trying. I don't know why. You there. fucked up. I did. The hell, he spooks up there. <laughs> <laughs> so he leads the league in uh, picks at first base. He's played a very good defense, and he's had to bust his ass to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and usually, when guys are busting their ass to be good defensively, they struggle at the plate. And if they're struggling to be good at the plate, they bring it into the field. That happened to Ahmed Rosario earlier this season. Mm-hmm. I don't want to f- uh, fix what ain't broken. That's not. I'm with you on that. So, I'd be okay. more inclined to put Dom Smith at third. I was about to say because Dom Smith it? is hitting really, really well. He had three straight games where he hit home runs at the opposite field only player in the league to do that this year and um i i would i'd be more inclined to try dom at third but i'm more inclined to trade dom to an american league team where he could play first base in dh yeah now the question is will the mets do any of these things no probably not i would hope that they they do it but i hope they don't bite at the first person that says hey we'll give you this uh low a ball relief pitcher for zach wheeler no you're gonna give me up at least a b level prospect Mm -hmm. who's two years away for zach wheeler if not someone that's major league ready now zach wheeler's not a bad pitcher man no and his numbers are very inflated based on a couple of bad innings but he's gone he's gone seven innings more than any pitcher in the league this year when he gave up 10 fucking runs to the national he's given up he's he's gone seven innings deep more than any pitcher in the league this year but 
everything else, it's just a calamity of errors. It wasn't the injuries for a while, then it became the injuries. Who would have thought Cano would have been this bad? Who would have thought Diaz would have been this bad? Who would have thought that everything like this would go wrong? That uh, Rosario would go go a week when he couldn't feel the fucking ball, where Wilson Ramos is just hitting grounders, mm-hmm. where um, they don't have an actual center fielder. Who would have thought Brandon Nimmo would end up with a herniated disc in his neck so they don't have a true leadoff hitter? What are your thoughts on Juan Lagares? Uh, he should be gone. He should have been DFA? gone a while ago. I would designate him for a Simon, but his contract's so heavy, you might as well just keep him on because you don't have anyone else. And this is how bad the state of the Mets is. If any anything else like this was happening, Tim Tebow would be up, but Tim Tebow is hitting 142 in the minors, and he's striking out 42% of the time. Yeah, that's bad. And he only has one home run. And so Tebow clearly couldn't make the f- jump from double A to triple A. You think he's going to be able to hit in the majors when no he can shot. sell a couple tickets? You can't even do that. Nope. No one wants to be there. The 69 Mets would have been more competitive over this fucking weekend. Just, so just, now they've lost, what, I think six or seven in a row, just got swept by the Phillies in Philadelphia. Blew a lead after the fifth inning in every single game. The first game, their win probability after the seventh inning was 71%. The second game, it was 82%. The third game, it was 87%. That fourth game that Edwin Diaz blew, their win probability in the seventh inning was 94%. Dude, I'm telling you, and it stinks too because I'm going I'm going on Tuesday to the Subway Series. The, the landlord asked me, she's like, do you want to go to a game soon? And I was like, I can still have fun in the game, but I'm yeah. so reluctant to give the Will Ponds any of my attention or money well, right now. The only reason why I'm even going is because I'm so angry. my um, uh, my mother get, bought me these tickets. It's like for Christmas. So I that's just, why I wanted to go. I, I, do, I, I wish I could fathom. And fuck you, Josh. Actually, by the way, fuck you, Josh, for all the shit you talk that I cursed the fucking Yankees. Yeah. Did I? Did I? Or you just didn't know your fucking team? You had about three seconds to turn this off before I turn you off. <laughs> you start spreading the news, dude. This da, it, it's da, da, it, it, yeah da. you know what keep it keep it fucking playing keep it fucking playing go, go dude because you got a New York team that lost everyone God. who'd they lose this season for a while they lost Aaron Judge they lost Giancarlo Carlos and Gary Sanchez at the DL they didn't have Didi Gregorius you lost your fucking uh, the, the third baseman whose name I'm forgetting now who's out for the year with the shoulder surgery who was the rookie last year fantastic player you had Clint Frazier who can't fucking cut his hair and he can't field the fucking ball you fucking had to go get Kendrys Morales who broke his ankle celebrating a walk off in the 2010 Edwin season Carcion, dude. you had to go trade for Edwin Carcion who was leading the American League in home runs at the time. The Mets, meanwhile, have the rookie leading the league in home runs. They have Jack McNeil, who's second in the fucking league in batting. You ha- you signed Wilson Ramos, who hit 25 home runs last year. The reigning Cy Young winner, Jacob DeGrom, who had a historic season, one of the best seasons in the last 20 years. You traded for a guy that had a 1.97 ERA last year to be your closer. His ERA is over five now. You signed you traded for Robinson Cano, who has never batted less than 280 in his career. He's batting 224 with four home runs and 18 <laughs> RBIs. He has 18 doubles, though. Woo! Ooh, extra no one base on hits. base. Oh, we can't field the ball either. He can't go left or to his right because he's fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Ahmed Rosario couldn't field the ball for a month. Juan Lagares can't field the ball at all. Guess what else he can't do? What? Fucking hit. At Michael all. Conforto gets a concussion. Comes back, gets another concussion. How'd they mishandle that? There's a calamity of errors. I'd rather deal with Luis Castillo dropping a pop fly at Yankee Stadium on a pop-up from Mark Tichera, from A-Rod and Mark Teixeira because he's a Yankee decides to hustle while Robinson Gano can't run out of fucking grounder to first. It's so, amazing. Meanwhile, Mickey Calloway is fighting with the media. Jason Vargas is trying to physically fight the media. Uh, no one on the team wants to take leadership. Jacob DeGrom gets a cramp uh, a cramp in his hip. Jacob DeGrom has a shoulder problem. Noah Syndergaard pulls a hamstring. Jason Vargas pulls a hamstring. What else happened? Steven Matz hits a deal. Zach Wheeler gives up a home run after having a has lead. Has anybody seen Jed Lowry? Has anyone seen Jed Lowry, by the way? Has anybody, has anybody seen, seen Jed Lowry? Has anyone seen Seth Lugo, so your best reliever? You want to know why that's great? Because if he pitches one inning, you can't use him the next day. If he pitches two innings, you can't use him for two days. So you have a setup man that can only be a setup man three days a week. So... What Whose this idea mean? was familiar? Who Who's? Uh, yeah, you could have signed Adam Adovino instead of Jerry Shamili. Guess who did sign Adam Adovino to, kind of, to the Yankees? And guess what his ERA is? Like 1.98. What's Jerry Shamili? is like 17. Sucks. And they're saying it's a shoulder problem. No, it's a he signed with the Mets problem. Because that's what happened. They signed Jason Bay back in the day coming off a top three MVP finish in the Boston Red Sox. And he hit seven home runs in his first year. Seven home runs. The best thing Jason Bay ever did as a Met was hit a walk-off useless bloop while fucking Mariano Rivera that meant nothing you, yeah exactly so what else is going right for this team tell me oh Todd Frazier might get you a low A ball prospect because he's fucking 40 oh did you know he played for Tom's River in the Little League World Series yes, he's I a know. local boy oh you know who else he was better with the fucking Yankees because they do things right and the Mets because they're built, built 
they're, they're probably built a nature in your burial ground where they, bu they buried Bill Buckner's dead baby under there. And this is what they fucking got. I don't even know if Bill Buckner has a dead baby. He probably does. <laughs> Start these rumors about too. Bill Buckner. Remember when they traded R.A. Dickey and they got that guy was supposed to be the best catching prospect in the league and yeah. they got a, a pitcher that no one was ever going to hear of? They traded for Travis Darnell. Where's he? Oh, he's playing first for the Rays. Is he? He stinks. Because yeah, he got DFA'd from the Dodgers. Noah Syndergaard, who's been pretty good, and his career has been terrible this year. Everything goes wrong because his team stinks, the Mets stink, and I stink too. Yeah, you do. And that was episode 59 of You Watch, I Listen. That was an epic rant. I just want to give, honestly, that's a round of applause. Yeah, because... you're going to have to put some stuff up in the back there, like Luis Castillo dropping the balls nah. and injuries. I can just give you a list. Oh, by the way, can I just list off some more Mets things here? Please. Carlos Beltran looking at strike three in game six, uh, uh, game seven of the 2006 yeah. NLCS. Um, Ryan Church getting concussion, and they t doctors told him, don't let him fly with the team. He flew with the team, missed the rest of the season. Uh, Carlos Beltran in his first year with the Mets coll colliding with Mike Cameron, tearing his ACL, missing the rest of the season. Uh, Johan Santana being left out for 134 pitches. Pitches for a no-hitter, tearing his shoulder up and never pitching again. What about uh, Carlos Delgado? Anything bad? Uh, Carlos Delgado, I mean, not anything in particular. Jose Reyes taking himself out of the lineup uh, to preserve the batting title in 2011 before signing with the Marlins. That's pretty lame. It's just uh, uh, David Wright. There's a million things I could name. It just goes on and on, and I'm just, I'm done. This was episode 59, good, and you watch, I listen. Um, we will see you guys next week with episode 60. The picks again this week. We're 28 days later in the Mayday Parades, a lesson in romantics. See you guys later. next week. Goodbye. Hello darkness, my old friend.